Hi, I'm Carlos Padero, and I would like to invite you to join me and my very special guest for God's Three Greatest Gifts. Hello, I'm Marty Church, and welcome to my camp. Well, that's what we so often say when it comes to our Native New Day video series. But today we find ourselves in the studios of Safe TV. And today we are going to begin talking about God's three greatest gifts. My part has to do with the gift of creation. You know, whenever I think of creation, I often think of all my trips way up north. I have the privilege of traveling all over the northwest, all way up above the Arctic Circle, all around Alaska. I also have the privilege of going over in the Northwest Territories as far as Canada spreads. It's a big country. Many times when we conduct meetings up there, I have the privilege as a pilot to fly over these vast areas, and oftentimes we elect to fly at night. And the reason is, is because flying up there in this beautiful area where there is no pollution in the sky, at night the stars are like, they're so close you can touch them. And there are times when you see stars that twinkle different colors. And then you look at the aurora borealis, and what a beautiful thing this is. And when I see these planets, uh, you begin to realize that we're not alone. This isn't the only place in the world. The universe is big, and I often think, what is it there for? Where did it come from? As I think about these things, I also think about other things that we see in nature. I love it when I see the geese flying south or north. And it's very interesting, even at night in foggy weather, uh, in the darkness, sometimes you hear them honking as they go along, and you wonder, what guides them? How do they know where to go, and how do they know what time to go? All these things flood our mind, and we begin to think, where did this all come from? But you know, it also has to do with it comes to me, too. I often wonder, as we look at our marvelous bodies, you know, that has baffled scientists and doctors, and we're discovering new things all the time. Where did this all come from? The Bible tells us, and we find it in Psalm chapter 33, verse 6 and 9. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. You see, my friend, the scripture outlines that we have a creator. He had a purpose. He had a reason for all this, and this is what we want to talk about today. As Monty shared with us, God gave us the great gift of life through his power of creation. Unfortunately, mankind refused this gift, and we inherited death. Now Dwight Nelson is going to bless us as he shared with us the second great gift of God in the power of love and the plan of salvation. Thank you, Carlos. I'd just flown over to London for a satellite event similar to this. Jet lag to the max, and I woke up early the next morning, couldn't sleep. Chilled February air in that little English village outside of London. I said, I got to run. So I put on my running shoes, moving down one of those twisting little alleyways, and I come to a pub, and you know the English love their pubs. It's a restaurant and a bar all combined. I think the name of this one was the Roebuck. I'm running across the empty parking lot when I come, in, come to a, a telephone pole, and you couldn't miss it. This sign affixed 10 feet into the air on the telephone pole, and I look up at the words, a very sobering sign once I realized its message. So here are the words. Fatal collision here Sunday, 10.38 p.m. If you have information, call the police at, and then the telephone number. I suddenly realized this, there was a fatal hit-and-run accident right here. And I did the arithmetic Sunday, and today's, uh, this was Thursday morning, four days ago. Somebody's life, somebody's dreams, somebody's loves all came to an instantaneous end right there at that spot where I'm now standing. 
I'm telling you, when you st- and you know, you know what it's like. When you stand at a place where you know somebody else has died, it is a sobering experience. I mean, you can drive anywhere in the world, and you will come to those little markers at the side of the highway, particularly here in this country. It'll be a cross, uh, uh, two or three balloons, uh, a collection of flowers, and you realize somebody right here came to the end. Makes you wonder, what was the sign affixed to that cross? Because there was a cross that day. No balloons, no flowers, three crosses. And I'm thinking of the middle cross on that awful Friday that we now call good. I want to go back to that moment with you right here in the Gospel of St. Matthew. I want to read the story of Calvary and let you just kind of relive it with me. This is Matthew 27, verse 33. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say the place of the skull, they gave him, that would be Jesus, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. And when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Now listen, sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Now, here's verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, that would be noon, From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When you stand at the sight of someone else's death, it is a sobering, sobering experience. Dwight Nelson talking to us about the power of love as revealed in the plan of salvation. Now Lonnie Milashenko is going to bless you with the power of God in his gift of redemption revealed in the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In your Sunday newspaper, according to New West magazine, if you stand on seat 22, row 74, section KK in the upper tier of UC Berkeley's Memorial Stadium, You can look south through the huge crack and see downtown Oakland. The crack, the width of your clenched fist, cuts through the upper tier of the stadium, and the structure is doomed. Doomed because, according to the paper, this 77,000-seat colossus straddles the Hayward Fault, one of the five most dangerous in the country. Looking south through the crack, you see more than downtown Oakland you're actually sighting along the approximate course of the Hayward Fault. Now, along this path of destruction and future devastation, north and south, lie 42 schools and hospitals, the 255-bed Claremont Hotel, BART lines, water tunnels, the El Cerrito Fire Station, and literally thousands of structures, including, ironically, the Alameda County Disaster Center. Has this fault only recently been discovered? No. It was known 140 years ago, as early as 1868. Yet few people give it any thought. Now, what sort of foolishness is this? What sort of fatalism that leads us to court danger as we do? We build our houses up and down the unstable hillsides in Grand Island, Nebraska's Tornado Alley, downtown New Orleans, right in the path of hurricanes Katrina and Rita, why we anchor our bridges in mud. Our proud structures of pre-stressed concrete are beginning to collapse, aren't they? Our freeway overpasses in Minneapolis and St. Paul easily collapse, even without a quake. You know, we're told the Golden Gate Bridge won't go down in a big tremor, but its approaches would. Now and then a fire in Australia or Paradise, California, a flood in Rio de Janeiro, a mudslide in Malibu, California, puts us in our place and shows us how vulnerable we are. But we forget so soon. Is our future decided by some alignment of the stars or by the spin of some cosmic roulette wheel? Is the day of our death written into our bodies before we were ever born? Are we nothing but Machines, sophisticated computers, and our lives only a game in which we are matched against lady luck. Now, some of you may wonder why a television station like Safe TV 
should devote so much time to the subject of creation, salvation, and redemption in this three-part series with Monty Church, Dwight Nelson, and Lonnie Belashenko. I mean, what possible connection could there be between 21st century life today, hanging by our fingernails, and the subject of creation and salvation and the second coming of Jesus? Ah, you might be surprised at how much the Bible has to say about these subjects. Lani Melashenko, Duet Nelson, and Monty Church are going to bless you with God's three greatest gifts, a very special presentation from Safe TV to you. You do not want to miss this wonderful spiritual feast. Be here.